Hello everyone. My name is Saurabh and I'm part of the Simply Learn team. Welcome everyone today to this session of blockchain. So let's get started. So before the blockchain came into industry, let's see how typical transactions used to happen. Let's take an example of a property transaction which used to happen in the past. Now when two parties have to do a transaction of property which is a very high value transaction there always used to be an intermediary involved. Now that intermediary is a broker who facilitates the transaction between the buyer and the seller and using the land records, the documents. He manages the documents, he gets all the documents verified and he is the primary trust person between the buyer and seller to get the transaction done. Now in the due course some things can go wrong. The broker can make alterations to the data or the broker can by mistake make errors in his own personal records or the records of the buyer and the seller. Now considering it's a very sensitive transaction at a high value if any problem comes into picture then both the buyer and seller can suffer huge losses. Now let's take another example of a banking transaction. If a sender wants to send money to a receiver typically in today's scenario or till now before the cryptocurrencies and the blockchain technologies came into picture we rely on banks you transfer money to a centralized bank which takes the ownership and gives you the trust to transfer the money to the receiver and in lieu charges a commission but things can go wrong here too either of your accounts can get hacked or the bank can go under some technical issues or you could have exceeded the number of transfer the limits allotted to you but with the virtue of cryptocurrencies today we can do these transactions with lower transaction cost as compared to what bank charges and it's a 24 7 available technology which you can use so basically the evolution of such a technology has come into picture in order to reduce the dependency on intermediaries to reduce the transaction cost and we do not have any limitations of transfer limits per day or the amount which you can transfer. So we will take a look what is the evolution of the technology blockchain. Now in 2008 when a person or a group of individuals called Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper in order to introduce a currency called Bitcoin in order to change the life forever for people who were dependent on the banking transaction for making any financial transaction. They introduced a democratic currency which was barrier free and which allowed payment across multiple geographies with low transaction fees. So this is how Bitcoin came into picture, a cryptocurrency that solved several of fiat currencies problems. For example, it is accessible by anyone, it is protected by cryptography, it is decentralized, there is no centralized authority owning the network or taking care of the transactions. It is the network and the participants in the network who are taking care of all the transactions and the sanity of the network and the anonymity of all the users are ensured. And Bitcoin uses what is called as blockchain technology as its underlying technology. So what's in it for us today? We will be talking about what is blockchain, what is Bitcoin, typical features of blockchain like public distributed ledger, hashing encryptions, the proof of work consensus algorithm, the mining techniques, how do miners gain money and other fields where blockchain is applicable. Now what is blockchain? Blockchain is a digital ledger that stores transaction details. These records are stored and aggregated in containers called blocks. These blocks are linked to each other and are secured using cryptography. Now let's take a look at the typical features. Blockchain is something which is available for anyone to access. Data can only be added. We cannot alter any information which is added to a blockchain and that is called its immutability feature. To add any data, a typical mathematical puzzle has to be solved by the validators of the network or so-called miners in order to maintain the sanity of the network and in lieu they receive a reward. The solution has to be approved by everyone in the network. The participants of the network are responsible for approving all the transactions. There is no central authority which has control over the information and that's why a blockchain network is a democratic network. The privacy of all the users is maintained by cryptography and the transactions which also happen on the blockchain network are encrypted. 
Now, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a digital currency that uses cryptography to limit how much of it exists at a time. It is also used to verify transfer of assets and secure financial transactions. Bitcoin uses blockchain technology. So, there is a limit to the supply of Bitcoin. Only 21 million are bound to be supplied in the network. As of today, around 26.5 to 17 million has already been mined and are available in the network for transactions. So, what are the features of Bitcoin. They don't work under a central authority. Transferring assets is faster as compared to fiat currency. Transferring assets is costlier with fiat currency. So as we have seen, the cryptocurrency market removes the need of intermediaries. More the intermediaries, the higher is the transaction cost. Therefore, whenever we are doing a transaction with virtual currencies or currencies like Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, the transaction cost is bound to be lower as compared to any fiat currency. Payments are secure by cryptography any transaction which you make using a bitcoin you are doing the transaction using your private key and public key so we will take a look how the encryption works and how any transaction is encapsulated in an encrypted envelope and then floated onto the network identities of the parties who are, who are doing transaction using bitcoin are kept anonymous and it uses blockchain as its underlying technology now what are the typical features of blockchain blockchain has four major features that make it special it is a public distributed ledger it uses hashing encryption it uses proof of work kind of consensus algorithm and it has entities like miners who are constantly working to maintain the validity of all the transactions on the blockchain network to keep the network sanitized now what is a public distributed ledger a public distributed ledger is a collection of digital data which is shared available to all the participants on the network it is synchronized everyone is having the same set of copy of data it is a replicated shared ledger across the world across multiple sites across the boundaries across countries and institutions so consider a blockchain that can be accessed by anyone in the network around the world but suppose someone decides to alter the data he or she can go and change one of the blocks but everyone every participant on the network has a copy of the ledger so it will be very easy to find that there is a block which is different from what others are having thereby it will be very fast in order to identify that which block is altered or tampered and they can easily discard that particular block from the network and the data tampering can be prevented encryption blockchain uses cryptography to ensure the blocks are kept secure from unauthorized access and alteration blockchain uses sh 256 encryption algorithm for encryption to validate users blockchain also makes use of digital signature whenever a user onboards a typical blockchain network he generates his or her own public and private key pair the public key is used to uniquely identify the user and the private key gives the user access to everything in his or her own account now let's see what happens in a typical sender and receiver transaction when a sender wants to send a message Message, that message is passed to the hashing function which in our case is the SHA 256 then the output of that hashing function is passed through a signature algorithm with the user's private key and this is how a digital signature is obtained from the sender side now once a digital signature has been generated the message the digital signature and the public key these three things are transmitted on the public blockchain now at the receiver end the message message is passed again through the cryptographic function on the reverse side to get a hash value now that hash value is compared with the hash output obtained by passing the digital signature and the public key through a verification function so the hash output of both the functions should match and that's how the authenticity of the message is being validated now each block in a blockchain uses sha 256 to secure its data now this is a typical structure of a header of a block which we are taking a look at every block 
in the blockchain has four fields it has a previous hash it has transaction details it has nonce and a hash address the value of previous hash transaction details and nonce are passed through a hashing function to produce a unique hash address for a particular block and that hash address basically becomes the identity of block which is unique across the network now what is previous hash this field is used to store the hash value of the previous block of the blockchain and this is how we are linking a new block to its previous block a block always contain aggregation of several transactions these details are placed in this field called as transaction details nonce is a random value which is used to generate a hash which should be less than the target value allotted to a block at a particular time the hash address is the unique identification of the block it is a hex value of 64 characters that has both letters and digits and it is obtained using two sha256 algorithm and this is the unique identity of every block on the blockchain network now what is proof of work proof of work is a competition amongst the people or so called miners around the world who are constantly working on a public blockchain network and who want to add a block to the blockchain that is the primary objective of the miners to add a block to the blockchain they are constantly working to find the nonce value which is the mathematical puzzles that the miner need to solve it is the process of finding an appropriate nonce that helps generate a hash value that satisfied certain predetermined conditions which are called as the targets the first one the first miner to find the nonce value gets rewarded for it he spreads the word amongst all other miners about finding the nonce value and a miner's claim is also very easy to identify now choosing a nonce value this is the primary objective of the miner they have to find a nonce value which has to be less than the target value if they find a value greater than the target then their mining effort is rejected but if they find a value hash value value and if they are successfully able to generate that hash value using the nonce and which is less than the target value then the effort is accepted and this is where the entire computational and hardware power of a miner is used in order to generate that nonce value in a stipulated amount of time and that's why they invest in that hardware in order to return get a reward which is their return on investment mining a miner would be able to find a nonce value while using up a lot of time money and resources the miner then spreads the word about finding this value other miners attempt to validate this claim that whether the miner who is claiming the value is correct or not and if verified by the other miners then only the miner gets rewarded mining is the process of miner being rewarded for being the first one to find the nonce the mathematical puzzle as of today a miner is rewarded with 12.5 bitcoins as a form of compensation but the amount of bitcoins as a reward gets half every 4 years because there is a limited supply of bitcoin thereby that logic is already been placed in the bitcoin network mining ensures that there is a limit to how much bitcoin can exist in the market mining is the only way new bitcoins can be generated and there is no other way that a new bitcoin can come into existence into the network there are other areas potential areas where the blockchain can be applicable blockchain has been identified and is being used in other industries as well for example travel to ease the verification of documents to make the processing of documents and transactions in travel and tourism seamless real time hotel inventories is also one of the use cases for travel and tourism industries on blockchain music industry music industry is using blockchain to stop music piracy and compensate artists for the songs which they have created and are being purchased online cyber security data integrity can be guaranteed there cannot be a single point of failure human resources authenticity of employment history authenticity of the identity of employees payments and benefits process validation these are all the areas where blockchain is getting used now let's take a look at a demo now i am going to show you a typical example of how a sha256 cryptography works now this is a sample input and when i'll say make hash this is a 256 length character hash which has been generated the beauty of sha256 is that whatever be the input it will always generate a 256 length hash the hash has changed but the length is the same now let's take a look 
at a typical blockchain. Now here we are seeing the first block in a typical blockchain which is called the genesis block and as it is the first block in the blockchain the previous hash value of this block is all zeros because it is the first block. Now if you notice the body has certain set of transactions which are there available to be mined and once this block will be mined then only I'll be able to add any subsequent block to it. Now once I'll mine this block it will turn green. It means that the block has been verified and validated on the network and a hash which is the signature of this block has been generated. Now I'll be able to add a block. The new block has newly aggregated transactions and the point to be noted is that the previous hash value has been populated in this section which basically links the block to the previous block. Now once I mine this then again this block turns into green and this is how a typical blockchain is created. Now let's take a look how a typical transaction a financial transaction happens on a blockchain. We have four users here who have their wallets with hundred dollars now and we are doing it a decentralized transaction. So wallet one would like to send one dollar to wallet two. Now the transaction has been initiated and it is pending at in the pending transaction section. Either of these miners which are there on this network can mine the transaction validate it and thereby once they have validated the wallet two has been credited with the one dollar. Now thing to be noted here is the block two which has been added has Adds that transaction here and if you see the previous block section this is the address of the previous block hash on the block and 0094e this is the hash of this block itself. Now suppose I add another transaction from wallet 2 to wallet 3 and say mine another block has got added and to note again block 3 previous hash is the hash value of block 2 and block 3's own hash starts with 003d8. What have we learned so far? We have learned what is blockchain, what is bitcoin, public distributed ledger, proof of work, hashing encryption and mining. Hope you had a great learning experience and I'll meet you in another session. Thank you. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.